Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the OR operator. OR is pretty straightforward. You take two simple sentences, for example, H, I am hungry, T, I am thirsty, and you put a wedge or a V in between those, H or T, and you get I am hungry or I am thirsty. When we use this V or this wedge, we are using it to represent what's known as the inclusive OR. That means that one or both of the simple sentences are true. I am hungry, or I am thirsty, or I am both hungry and thirsty. That is what HVT means. These ors are very easy to spot because, well, they have or in them. So here are three examples. First, I will shower or I will brush my teeth. So if this is the inclusive or, that means I could be showering or I could be brushing my teeth or I could be brushing my teeth while I shower like Kramer does from Seinfeld. In the second example, you must present a driver's license or a passport as identification. That means I could show you my driver's license or I could show you my passport. And of course it would be fine if I got out both my driver's license and my passport, that wouldn't be a problem. This last example is a little bit tricky, so let's walk through it. San Diego is classy or Ron Burgundy is a liar. So it could be the case that San Diego is classy and Ron Burgundy has been telling us the truth, so he's not a liar. It could be the case that San Diego is not classy, in which case Ron Burgundy was lying to us. And because this is the inclusive or, it could be the case that San Diego is classy and Ron Burgundy is a liar for a different reason other than him telling us that San Diego is classy. So again, these are easy to find because they are ors, and when we convert these sentences to logical notation and we use that V or that wedge to represent the or, we are looking at an inclusive or. This is in contrast to the exclusive or, so I want to be very explicit about this. An exclusive or, which is sometimes known as XOR in logical notation, is an or statement in which both of the things being joined together cannot be true. So the good way to test to see whether you're looking at an inclusive or statement or an exclusive or statement is by asking yourself, if I throw either in the front of the sentence and it is trying to actually mean what I think it means, then you're looking at an exclusive or. So for example, either I will have chicken or I will have steak. Well, that is intending to mean that I'm going to have chicken or I'm going to have steak, but I'm not going to have both. That's like being asked at a restaurant, would you like super salad? When your waiter or waitress asks you that question, there is an either there, at least implicitly. Either you can have the soup or you can have the salad. You're not allowed to have both. That is an exclusive or. The second one that you see on your screen there, either I will go to Disneyland or I will go to California Adventure. That's meaning that I don't have time to go to both, so I'm just going to go to one. It's either going to be Disneyland or it's going to be California Adventure. It's not going to be both. Now for this course, we're not going to have a dedicated symbol for the exclusive or, the X or. Your logical textbook or your professor might actually use a dedicated symbol for this, in which case they would use a circle with a cross for it. I'm going to not have an extra symbol here because we can actually avoid having the extra symbol by representing this in a different way. And we'll actually see how to represent this when we start talking about the conjunction operation. So just be very careful when you're taking logical sentences, simple sentences, English sentences, and converting them into logical statements using the representation with capital letters, that you're getting the interpretation right, whether it is an exclusive or or an inclusive or. And if we're looking at an inclusive or, we're using the V that we've been talking about here. So the last thing I want to note for this lecture is when we represent the inclusive or, we're going to be using that wedge, that V that we've been seeing before. So H or T, H V T, that's how we're representing it in this course. You might see other people represent it with a vertical line. So H vertical line T or H or T is how they might represent it. We're going to use, be using that V because I think it looks prettier. Also, the name might differ. So I'm going to be calling this either the or logical operation or sometimes every now and then a disjunction logical operation. Sometimes I'll actually use both interchangeably, uh, but I'm not going to be using alternation very frequently or even after even at all. But some people might call this alternation. You might see that in a textbook or from a professor. Either way, or disjunction, alternation, all the same thing. And that's the or operation. So now that we've learned two logical operations, we can learn how to combine these things together using both negations and ors or disjunctions at the same time. So that wraps up this lecture. And in the next lecture, we'll look at how to mix these two things together. Join me then.